Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Dominic Peterson, a.k.a. Doug's on 503, talking all things Oregon football. If you're not following, if you're not subscribed already, go and smash those buttons below to join the Doug's Zone family. We're always talking Oregon football. At Doug's Zone 503, you guys know what to do. If you're on social media, either Instagram or Twitter, simple search at Doug's Zone 503. Go ahead and follow me to get the quickest updates. Where we're always talking Oregon football. Welcome to the channel, guys. If you're new, if, you're, if you've been around, welcome back. Appreciate you guys always for locking in. Liking, sharing the videos, subscribing. We're at 390 subscribers, guys. Can we reach 400 by the end of the week? I'm putting that one on you guys. Let's hit 400 subscribers by the end of the week. Also, guys, shout out the vlog, okay? I was at the game this past weekend. If you guys haven't seen the vlog, go check that out. It just came out today as well. All right, here we go with your Tuesday episode, everybody. We got the recap and analysis episode. Oregon gets a huge win in revenge fashion over Utah, 20-17 to in a close, close defensive battle. Man, what a game. Big defensive battle. Literally probably the best defensive performance from the Ducks this season. Um, to, to be honest, probably wasn't even close. Literally the, the best defensive uh, performance so far this season from the Ducks. I mean, the efficient Utah offense led by Cam Rising. Man, the Ducks shut that thing down. Rumor has it, by the way. Now, this is a rumor. This isn't a report or anything. That Dan Lanning may be calling the plays now, okay? As you know, defensive coordinator Tosh LePoy came in, and uh, originally he was calling the plays. Um, but this this defense looks a little bit different, a little bit uh, getting more, a little bit more pressure. It feels like doing a little more things on the D line. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to look into there. Um, you know, no one talks about it. You know, I know this can be boring as well, but this played a big part of the game. Special teams won this team, uh, won this game for Oregon. Special teams, okay. Shout out Camden Lewis. Oregon executed on their field goals while stopping Utah on defense. Cam Rising, you know, had one of the worst games I've ever seen him play. You know, like, for example, that fourth down throw, right? Man, really, really, really bad throw. I mean, that really surprised me. He threw it right to uh, his receiver. His receiver was open on that fourth and two for Cam Rising. And he throws it at his feet right towards the ground. Really surprising throw there. It was cold outside. Maybe his hands were freezing. Who knows? Um, you add on that Utah, their coaches never really trusted their kicker after his first miss. And, uh, you know, they go for it on multiple fourth downs, matter of fact. And what happens? Oregon gets stops on those key fourth downs. So that was big for Oregon and their defense. Uh, you know, speaking about quarterbacks, let's, uh, you know, we can't we can't talk about this game without bringing up Bo Nix, right? Storyline going in. You know, uh, we didn't know if Bo was going to play or not. Goes out there and plays on one leg and actually plays a damn good game. Uh, you know, obviously he wasn't 100% in this game, but, you know, you got to credit Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator, for adjusting the offense just enough to get that win. Uh, you know, you had, uh, you know, you had Chris Hudson that say uh, earlier in the week, you know, a big storyline came out all over Twitter. Uh, you know, Chris Hudson uh, did an interview uh, like two, three days before the game after practice. And, you know, he, he stated that Bo wasn't going to play pretty much and that, that everybody in a whirlwind, um, you know, and you also had the media, okay. The very own media who, who was limited on what they could see and not see in practice uh, this last week. Um, you know, so just to see Bo come out and show his toughness, his grit, his character on who he is and play a damn good game. I mean, after the game, you see the emotion on Bo's face in that post game interview. I don't know if you guys seen it, but he has a he had a post game interview interview after the game uh, with with one of the colleagues out there calling the game. And um, man, he had a he he had an emotional interview. You could just see the the tears in his eyes. He was fired up. Uh, really good, really good to see Bo man a, a play for his teammates, do his thing, and nothing nothing against Ty Thompson or anything. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big Ty Thompson advocate. I personally think if if, if Ty comes into his own, we could see a really special quarterback. Um, but this year, when he's came in, um, we just haven't seen Oregon move the ball effectively with him at quarterback. Um, 
He came in for one play in this Utah game. Uh, uh, Dan Lanning, after after the the game, pretty much said that uh, they they kind of threw that in as a wrinkle, you know, kind of trying to see uh, if they could mix it up a little bit on offense, throw tie in the game, and you know, it ended up as a fumble and a turnover for the Ducks, and you know, it, it wasn't good there. Um, so when the when uh it was questionable that Bo was gonna uh play or not. Man, my head, it was a head scratch for me in this game for sure. Uh, another thing I noticed in this game is uh, because Bo was not 100%, the Ducks run game was pretty ineffective. Uh, a lot of things the Ducks do is a lot of read option, a lot of get you look this way, run this way uh, with their run game. So the fact that Bo was just 100% kind of just let Utah kind of just make their decision to go after the running back 100%. Uh, they knew that Bo was just pretty much not a threat there. Uh, on the defensive side of things for this game, you got to shout out Bennett Williams, okay, for a major bounce back game after he struggled against Washington. A lot of a lot of passes, a uh, big passes too that that were given up from uh, Bennett Williams. So good to see him get two big time interceptions. One on a tip pass from the D line, and he goes ahead and gets it. And then uh, that was right after a Ducks turnover. By the way, they get their own turnover, so that was really big. And then you got to talk about that last one, the last interception you had. That was huge, okay? Right, uh, I think there's like four and a half minutes left in the game. And uh, Utah has the ball. They're kind of driving it. and Man, Bennett Williams steps in front of that pass, reacts very well, and uh, gets that late game interception. Williams is uh, named the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week this week. Uh, well-deserved. Big, big game. Uh, Big-time big player. Uh, to really, you know, a lot of people were were chatting his name. A lot of people were kind of blaming the loss on him, and he came out and got the win for the Ducks in this one, just flat out. Uh, you know, and you can't you can't stop talking about this game if if you're not going to speak special teams. Okay, the probably the MVP of this game. You cannot forget kicker Camden Lewis, man. I call him Mister Reliable because this guy is really reliable at kicker, and it's not it's pretty rare the Ducks have a reliable kicker to be honest with you and. Uh, Camden Lewis, you know, pretty much won this game for Oregon by making his field goals. Okay. On a night where the Oregon offense is kind of struggling and the defense is holding Utah back, you know, it all comes down to uh, special teams who has the better special teams at this point. And uh, Lewis uh, was trusted by Lanning uh, to go out there and make his field goals while the Utah kicker kind of struggled a little bit and, you know, didn't really get much of a chance to kick on key fourth downs from their coaching staff. So you look at that kind of coaching battle and how that went down, it really, you know, went Oregon's way on the special teams and defensively for them uh, to get over the hump. Um, you know, with Knicks not being 100%, uh, Oregon wasn't completely stalled out on offense, but, you know, they didn't reach that 40 points per game mark. They were hitting almost every game and only scoring 20 points, you know, if you would have told me before the game, Oregon's going to score 20 points this game, I would have told you this is going to be a loss because Utah has a very efficient, effective offense that I did not think the, the Oregon Ducks were going to stop like this that they did tonight. So really, really good play for the Ducks. Um, you know, this win pretty much locks up Oregon's chances to play in the Pac-12 championship against USC. As you know, USC beat UCLA in a stunning game. That was a really good game. If you guys didn't watch that one, I recommend you guys go watch the highlights. But UCLA, look, uh, USC uh, is locked in for the Pac-12 championship game officially. Uh, for Oregon, I would say they they have a 95% chance of making it, 90 95% chance. I don't know the exact math. I don't have, like, a model for you. But uh, they are pretty much locked in. A lot of things, let's just put it this way, a lot of things would have to happen uh, against them. Uh, to, for not only would they have to lose, but other teams would have to lose for them not to go. Um, you know, they they pretty much they'll lock they'll lock, they'll walk right in the Pac-12 championship, book their ticket to Las Vegas. Uh, if they win uh, against Oregon State this next week, Oregon State's no slouch. Uh, eight wins. We'll talk about it here in, uh, in the end of the episode. <laughs> Uh, preview episodes and predictions on Thursdays, uh, Oregon State, that would be a big one. All right, let's do a stat recap on this game. Bo Nix had a nice, nice game. Okay, he's playing on one leg, of course, not 100%, uh, but threw uh, 25 for 37, 287 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, threw it 37 times, okay? 37 times is pretty high. 
for what he's usually been throwing on the season. But, you know, because of the injury, of course, you're going to throw it more, right? Played a phenomenal game, you know, given the circumstances. Had guys on the O-line as well. I think uh, multiple O-linemen out, starting O-linemen out for this game. Uh, his center, uh, I think, was out. Alex Forsythe was out. So, um, you know, got to give got to give credit where credit due. Uh, Bo Nix out, absolutely outplayed Cam Rising this game and uh, got his team to win. Dante Thornton, big time receiver coming into his own four receptions, 151 yards this game. Uh, you know, starting to really become that player that everybody was predicting he was going to be coming out of high school. A lot of people predicted it for, uh, thought he was going to be like the number one receiver this year. And, you know, with a look, we're just deep at receiver guys. Like it's nothing against Dante. Dante's an absolute beast, but um, you know, it's just, it's just been a struggle to kind of get on the field, but with a little bit of injuries happening with Chase Coda and stuff like that, he, he's been uh, getting his opportunity. He's been doing really well. A uh, dangerous downfield threat with, with uh, you know, speed, got the hands, got the size. I mean, this guy is your your typical NFL receiver when you just look at him and he's doing his thing. I mean, you guys see that that catch where he's looking this way and last second the ball is coming in the air, he turns and just makes the catch. I mean, that's that's an absolutely professional catch right there. It's really hard to make, and he's coming into his own. Um, you know, offensively coming into this game, the Ducks pretty much ran the ball well all year. One of the best rushing offenses in college football. Well, Oregon was held to 59 rushing yards this game. Guys, if I would have told you that Oregon would rush for 312 yards and lose, but then rush for 59 yards and win, would you believe me? I mean, that is just absolutely insane. Okay. As you know, the run game was pretty ineffective because the read option just wouldn't work. Uh, you know, Utah knew that Bo was just not a threat to run, so they just key on it on the running back. Uh, good thing the passing game was kind of, you know, kind of moving the ball for Oregon at times when it needed to, and, you know, Camden Lewis was able to really make his kicks. Uh, you know, I said earlier, Cam Ward did not have a good game. Uh, Cam Ward had uh, 21 of 38 passing, 170 yards, zero touchdowns, and three interceptions. Oregon defense was all over uh, Cam Ward. Uh, really pressured him to kind of move out of the pocket. Uh, Ward didn't play well at all himself when he did get the opportunity to make some passes. We talked about the fourth down play that he that he really just really man threw it threw it towards the towards the uh, receiver's feet. Uh, you know, Oregon defense forced three turnovers on him, held him under two hundred yards passing. You know, Utah ran the ball pretty well, but. You know, didn't dominate the game with their run game by any means. Only 156 yards rushing. Uh, their tight end, Dalton Kincaid, came in as the number one pass-catching tight end in the country. He led the nation in reception yards coming in this game. He did have 11 catches, a lot of catches, but only 99 yards. Okay, Oregon did a really good job of getting him tackled after the catch, getting him down to the ground. Uh, funny, funny thing I got to bring up is on that tip interception that Bennett William has, I, I know you guys see that. When when Jordan Riley, I think it was Jordan Riley, tipped the pass and Bennett Williams goes and gets that interception, that interception wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for Justin Flo. Okay, Justin Flo absolutely suplexes Dalton KK. <laughs> you guys seen it? It was it was so funny. Oh man, yeah, that's that was one you guys got to go back and watch on the highlight reel. That was a good one. Bennett Williams interception. Go watch it off a tip pass. You watch Dalton KK get suplexed. Uh, you know, Kid Kane had a really good, uh, pretty good game. You know, he got loose a couple times, but you know, for the most part, Oregon did a really good job on him. Uh, you know, against USC, for example, uh, Kid Kane had over 200 yards re re receiving that game, and just absolutely killed USC. And Utah won that game. So for Oregon to keep him uh, just under 100 yards and have zero touchdowns is absolutely impressive. In my opinion, entering this game, I thought this was going to be a nightmare matchup for the Ducks, you know, given from what I saw the week prior and just the history of the Ducks not really defending tight ends that well, I thought this was going to be an absolute nightmare. Ducks did a really good job against Kincaid. Credit to the Ducks defense. Okay, so as you guys know, in the preview prediction episodes on Thursdays, we like to give our keys of the game. Well, on Tuesdays, on the recap and analysis, we go ahead and recap the three keys of the game and see how we did. And what really wildly here, probably the first time in the season where my keys, a lot of them didn't get hit. A lot of them, the Ducks didn't really didn't hit on these keys, but they still got the win, which is really impressive. So 
Uh, number one, I had get off the field on third down. Uh, Utah was eight of 15 on third down. So this is not, uh, not at all a pass for me. Uh, when you're over 50% on third down, that is not good defensively. Uh, Oregon did do a better job at least uh, than they did last year against Utah. I could say that. So that was that was a positive for me there, that a good takeaway for me there that uh, last year I think Utah was like 80 to 90% on third downs, uh, and they absolutely destroyed Oregon, as you know. But this year was a little different. Number two, I had rushed for over 250 yards. Okay, I thought, you know, this was going to be a major, major key right here, probably the biggest key entering the game. Because, you know, you had Bo Nix just being questionable for this game. You didn't know who was going to play. So if it was going to be Ty, you know, I definitely thought they were going to game plan for a heavy run attack. If it was going to be Bo, uh, you know, if he was going to play, you know, I knew he wasn't going to be 100% if he did play. So I definitely thought that was going to be a game plan for a heavy running attack. So either quarterback that was going to play, my prediction was, okay, Oregon's just going to run the ball as much as they can. Well, they end up rushing for only 56 yards and still pull out the W against a top 10 Utah team who beat the crap out of them twice last year. So that is what I call a complete team win. And then last but not least, I had B plus two in the turnover battle. So get two more turnovers in Utah without uh, that. I think that would definitely put them up. Well, turnovers were three to three. The Ducks had three turnovers. Um, Utah had three turnovers. Each team did a good job at turning one another over. But it turns out the Oregon special teams is just a little bit better than Utah special teams. Oregon wins 20 to 17 by a field goal. Although it wasn't a game winning field goal, not that kind of fashion, the defense stepped up just enough for Oregon to win this game. That's why I just told you guys complete team win, offense, defense, special teams. Okay, so final thoughts on the game, final analysis here. So, as you can tell, I'm pretty happy. You know, because as they say, parental advisory here, cover your ears, kids. Three, two, one. Revenge is a bitch, Utah. <laughs> Utes, go down. Maybe <laughs> let's go. This is a big one for me personally. Uh, you know, last year was, it was pretty hard to watch seeing Utah just get the best of us twice. So awesome for the Ducks to get revenge, you know, a complete team win. Um, you know, this is awesome. Now you have the opportunity right in front of you uh, of a Pac-12 championship game. If you win that one, you're off to the Rose Bowl, right? So, man, with this win over Utah, pretty much you can book your ticket to Las Vegas now. Still got business to handle, though. Next week, Oregon State. Okay, we're in the dam at Oregon State. I think the Beavers will be top 25 for sure. I think the rankings come out. If you're watching this, you, I think the rankings will definitely be out. Um, I think Oregon State would definitely be top 25. Oregon State is no slouch at all this season on 8-3 and three this season, okay? This is Oregon State's first time reaching eight wins since 2012. So it's been over a decade, guys, since they've been this good. Uh, last time Oregon played in the dam uh, at Oregon State, it was in 2020 when there was no fans, okay? And Oregon actually lost that game, guys, if you remember correctly. So it's going to be a big-time, big-time game. We will be preview previewing it. We will be predicting it all on Thursday. So, guys, if you really like like uh, content like this, make sure to throw a like. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share the video to your friends. Uh, shout out to social media, okay, at DougZone503. If you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, got to be following there. Shout out to vlog, guys. I was at the Utah at Oregon game at Austin Stadium. I was there. I vlogged it. You guys go check that out. Everybody loves the vlogs for sure. I'll see you guys Thursday. As you guys know, it's always go Ducks over here. Preview, preview prediction episode for the Oregon State game will be out Thursday on Thanksgiving. So get your turkey ready. Get your stuffing ready. I'll see you guys Thursday. Can't wait for you guys. Let's go.